with us tonight, and that's why I didn't want to uh, waste her very valuable time. Um, our, um, our city is in tremendous hands under the new mayor and the new cabinet, and our own city councillor, Kathy Curry, is with us, and uh, she's going to fill us in on something called a special economic zone, at a minimum. I'm sure there are other things she's probably going to touch on, but uh, Kathy, would you be uh, kind enough to step up and take it away? Thank you. Is my microphone working here yet? Oh, there it is. Wonderful. Thank you very much, and thank you very much for coming to this. Um, one of the things I learned uh, knocking on doors was it's not super effective or efficient to tell your story to one person at a time. It, uh, and I did that from door to door, but uh, it's so much better to tell it to a bunch of people who can then potentially go and tell other people what's, what, what I'm about to tell you. Um, I'm really honored to be here because uh, what I'm going to talk to you about, really, I'm going to talk about it, but most of it was done and decided before I was even uh, um, appointed. And I was appointed back in November 2021 uh, to take the place of Jenna Suds. And I always find it funny, we joke that you know she left in a mad dash to become the MP telling me, Kathy, people are really angry about this situation over here, and people are really angry about this, and there's blasting that people are really upset about it. See you later. <laughs> oh, thanks a lot. But then she's, you know, her, her number one uh, point was, but you have the special economic district, you know, that she was potentially leaving me with that. And uh, I often say to her now, how's the gun legislation going over there? <laughs> How are you liking that? So um, anyways, I'm really uh, pleased to talk about this, but know that it didn't uh, start with me. And uh, we look at some of the people in this audience today, and, and they know it, it actually started with them. Mary Ann Wilkinson, former Councillor Wilkinson, is here with us, uh, certainly. Did a lot of the thinking and planning of this for many, many years prior to this. And uh, a number of councillors here tonight that I'll introduce you to when I see them all arrive. Um, we're also a part of a lot of this, so I want to make sure you realize that. I'm not taking any credit, I'm just happy to talk about it. So I thought I would start and just talk about what my role is on uh, City Council this year. Uh, not this year, but for the whole term for four years. Uh, I sit on a lot of uh, different committees, and uh, one of them, I'm the chair of the Audit Committee, I'm vice chair of the Transit Commission, and vice chair of the LRT Subcommittee, so be kind to me. Uh, the chair of the Transit Commission, Glenn Gower, will be here shortly, and uh, so any problems or concerns you have, just direct them straight to him. I'm just the vice chair. <laughs> uh, I'm on the Environment Committee, the Finance and Economic Development Committee, which has a new name that none of us can remember. Finance and uh, Corporate Services, I think is what it's called now. I'm on the Planning and Housing Committee, the Mississippi Valley Conservation Authority Board, the Ottawa Police Services Board, and uh, Hydro Ottawa. So I'm a very busy bee, and uh, I thought I would go through that with you so that you could see uh, why what I'm going to talk to you about is the job of so many parts of our city and city council. Um, so to start, as I said, prior to me, really just prior to when I was appointed, city council passed, uh, or well, submitted our city's official plan. And our official plan, it took years and years of thinking, and uh, it will span the next 25, well, 24, but 25 years by the time the next one comes into effect. It'll span from now till 2046. And, uh, you know, it was a lot of work, a lot of consultation, and one of the things that applies to us, I think, that is most interesting is that there was a unique thing done in the official plan, and that was to make a special economic district in two parts of the city. So one part of the city, as you can imagine, is the Ottawa International uh, Airport Economic District, and it's the yellow section there, obviously that's our airport. But the other area that was designated as a special economic district was the Kanata North Special Economic District, and that's all of us here in the Tech Park where we sit right now. Uh, unique and important, but specifically, a special economic district is important not just to a city, it has, it has to have municipal importance, provincial importance, international importance, national importance and international importance. That's no small feat. I think you can appreciate that the airport, it makes sense. But Canada North Tech Park, municipal, provincial, national, international importance. Well, if you work in these companies at the Tech Park here, then you probably agree. 
Um, but it's interesting to know that there are 540 technology companies here. I often find, especially when I was knocking on doors, that I, I felt like I was on the shopping channel and I'd tell people, there's not just 20 companies there, not 50, you know, not, not 100, you know, not 250, but 540. 540. I, I don't know that everybody understands that. You know, you don't want me to do my shopping channel version again, but 540. Um, in Canada North, there's 40,000 residents, 23,000 skilled workers. What happens in the tech park contributes $13 billion to Canada's GDP. It's not small potatoes. And interestingly, 70% of tech park employees live in Canada North. That was a study done by our Canada North Business Association. Interesting statistic. So when you look at the sectors that are represented, again, you know, I promised Terry I would say 5G and it's up here. 5G, but the sectors, defense, cybersecurity, software, clean tech, engineering, 5G, manufacturing, biotech, data and cloud services, life sciences, wireless and photonics, telecommunications, aerospace, semiconductors, and many more. So if you think about the expertise and the brain power in this area, it's pretty overwhelming. So. That alone maybe could indicate to you why we would designate it as a special economic district. Right now there are 1,800 jobs open in this special economic district, 1,800. Talent attraction is a challenge. 30,000 jobs worldwide for, based on the companies that are in the tech park. So 1,800 right here right now and 30,000 that these companies here are advertising that they need talent for. This is the largest tech technology park in Canada and is the second largest technology park in North America, the first one obviously being Silicon Valley. Unbelievably impressive. And, and that is a story that needs to be told. So, as a city, we created an official, an official plan. We designated two areas that were special economic districts, and there's lots of jobs. Not that many years ago, Tim Berners-Lee said about the web, the web as I envisioned it, we have not seen it yet. The future is still so much bigger than the past. And that is exactly the way I think, and maybe you should think, and hopefully we all think about our special economic district. The potential is, is not, we, none of us can even imagine the potential that is, is here right now where we sit. So our Canada North Business Association, I sit on the board of that, um, its motto is the Canada North Tech Park is where we live, work, play, learn, and innovate. It started off as live, work, play, and then it expanded. Learn and innovate, and I'll talk to you a little bit about that, how that expanded. But for us at City Council, as city councillors, what we care about is Obviously we care about the special economic district, that's why we designated it that. But we care about the we, the people. The people that live in Canada North and in the entire city. And we sit around that table, that is the exact table we sit around. And we ask the questions like, what do the people need? How much will this cost? What is the impact of this on our environment? How will people get around? Do we have the space? Do we have the infrastructure? Where will the people live? So. As part of the official plan, the city had to uh, show the province where the people will live. And so what our city council did was it uh, sent this map to the province in the official plan document and it said, all those purple areas are where we will have new neighborhoods. And the yellow area down in the south is a new uh, indigenous uh, development called Taywin. And that will be a significant development. And so that was the plan. And we submitted the plan. And if you were following it at all, the province kept delaying approving it. And city councillors at the time were saying, what's the delay? What's going on? What's happening? We would hear rumors about they weren't totally happy with what we had said about where people will live and how the city will expand. And just so you know, when you look at this map of the city of Ottawa, our, we are ge geographically enormous in that there are five other cities, we usually just name four, but really five other cities that would fit within our geography. And they are Toronto, Edmonton, Calgary, and Montreal. All fit within 
our geography. It's a massive city geographically. So, and you know, when you have a large geography, you have obviously, you know, this isn't rocket science, you have more roads, you have more need for transit, you have more city infrastructure, it's expensive. We also have very cold weather. There's all kinds of things that go along with this. So we have this massive uh, geography already, and we submitted that to the province, and the province came back and said, actually, we'd like you to add even more. So all of the new areas there that I'm showing you there in the orange are all the new areas. So let's go back. That's what it, we submitted, and this is what the province added in. So uh, you can see, you see where we are, Canada up there, you see that addition. That's significant. Specifically, 175 hectares were added to Canada North on top of what we already have. 65 in Stittsville, 106 Riverside South, 257 in Leitrim, and 37 in Orleans hectares. Approximately 550 developable, developable hectares to the urban area. That's, that's huge. So we were not prepared for that, but we will have to. Um, we'll have to manage it and figure it out and figure out how we we're going to uh, work with that amount of land. And in the year, so when I was appointed November 2021, the one year that I was on council before the actual election, it was at times at planning committee and my colleagues here uh, that I see now were there with me, Laura Dudas in the back there is from Marlene's, also on planning committee with me, and uh, Glenn Gower, head of transit. I told them, Glenn, you're ready to take all questions about LRT. <laughs> and Alan Hubley, Canada South. Where's Alan? Right there in the back. So those city councillors are the ones really who were responsible for all this. But in the last year on planning committee, we had moments on planning committee where we talked about it being the Canada show. And in the one year, we added 5,100 dwelling units approved in Canada North. Just in Canada North, and those are the addresses, but let me show you what some of them look like. I don't have all of them, but I have some of them. This area here is the area up by Tanger, which is considered Arcadia. So 368 units, most of those are uh, townhomes, um, stacked townhomes, but 368 units were approved. This is 180 Canada Avenue across from Best Buy. You see all the blasting and digging that'll be going on there. That's the building that will go up. Interestingly, so this is the building that is 180 Canada Avenue and 150 Canada Avenue, I'll show you in a second. The area in between will be a walking path that goes into Bill Terran Park with a pathway right up into the park. Um, but 304 units on that corner and 351 units that will wrap around that corner and into an up maritime way. A lot of blasting, a lot of, a lot of housing units. These, these are the Brooks, this is the tower behind the Brook Street that will have 256 units, was approved last year. And Canadian Shield Avenue, the area that we call the town center now, 244 units. And the biggest news in town at planning committee last year was the considerable development coming to the tech park. So remember we talked about that live, work, play, learn, and innovate? The live part, I don't know, nobody ever really lived in the tech park, right? It was all, it was all businesses. So then Nokia came along. And Nokia said, we love Canada. We love Canada North. We know you have the largest tech park in Canada. And we would love to expand. You know, they have the entire corner there, Terry Fox and March Road. We'd love to expand and we'd love to have residential along with our office buildings and our labs. And so if you think about it, if you were a company, an international company, and having to come into another country, another city with our planning department, planning staff, and all the very complicated processes, forms, not knowing who the people are, and you wanna uh, put forward a plan like that, to have residential units in a tech park where that's never really been done before? Well, the, the smart thing that, again, people before me decided to do was to put 
Steve Willis as head of planning, and Krishan Walker, and Krishan Walker's here tonight with us. Hi, Krishan. Um, in charge of the project. So that is not normally done. Normally, a, a development company would have to try to make their way through City Hall. But if we want companies like Nokia to invest in, in Canada, in Ontario, in Ottawa, in Canada North, uh, this is what has to happen. You have to have a lead, and Krishan was a lead who really worked with the people at Nokia and shepherded them through all the processes of the city. So it was almost, as Steve Willis would say, it was almost like a concierge service. And that's required. And, and if we want economic development and we want to attract other companies to do this, that's what you have to do. So that's what we did. And they put together this plan. So there's two different diagrams here. On the right side of that is where their labs will be. This is, you know, Terry Fox March Road. Their labs and their office spaces will be there, and all the rest of that will be residential, with parks, with activity space, with shopping on the lower levels. In our new official plan, we talk about having commercial on the lower levels so that people can walk to services they need. So that is what Nokia is proposing. Now, I don't have this in this presentation, but across the road from Nokia is another development. You know, stay tuned. Um, it'll be massive. It'll be developed by Maine and Maine. They're applying right now through planning committee. And it'll, it'll be similar. Tall uh, residential towers with commercial below with parks. What Nokia will have here is that is that green area there will be a parking garage underneath with a park space on top with a running track. And, and the ability for the community to use some of these spaces and obviously in the residential for sure there'll be little parks and you know different fields and things for uh, the community. So, 1,900 units. So uh, who was I just talking to? Steve. I said 900. It's 1,900. So 1,900 across the road from that, it will be the same thing. Terry Fox. Across Terry Fox. Across, so, yeah, down Terry Fox is if you're, yeah, basically right across the road from Nokia. So massive development coming there as well. Um, so we've got the live now in the tech park, right? And, and you, many of you probably already know that in the tech park, we have the learn. We have Ottawa U, we have Carleton University, we have Algonquin College and La Cité. All four of our uh, important institutions right in the tech park. With office space at Hub 350 so that they are connecting with each other, connecting with the technology companies. Um, it's a critical component to the vision of what the tech park can be because once you have the, the uh, universities and colleges there, then they, their goal is to have residences there for their students, right? So we have downtown campuses. Um, you know, we have the, the Carleton University campus, right? They have their, their uh, academic buildings and then they have their residential for students. Well, that's what we wanna see in the tech park. So uh, students can live in the residences and then come down in the morning, go into their internships in the companies that are right there. So we talk about talent attraction. We talk about how do we get the right people, well, nothing better than our own young students who have already started to work in these companies who already know what they're doing, they're already connected to the people uh, that can help them with their career development. So the vision is, as I you know, said, and as Tim Berners-Lee said, it's all to come. You know, there's, there's so much potential in this area. Um, the, the uh, have I covered? Live, learn, work, play, and we have Innovate. So most of you probably understand all that goes on in this tech park, but you know, for, for people who are not paying attention, uh, Elspark, you know, Terry's brainchild, where you have these great uh, young entrepreneurs, students come up with a great idea, but you know, who's gonna help them with a business case? Who's gonna help them learn how to actually get a product to market? All that they need to know to be successful. Well, that's, that's the work at, that takes place at Ells Park, right within the tech park. Hub 350, with a living lab, where, where products can be tested and you see how they work with real people in real life situations. That's what happens, you know, what human factors engineers, it's their dream to have living labs. And the media lab that's set up by Ross Video, they are for all the companies to use to promote what they do. So they can share that, uh, expertise, share the product, share the understanding of what the future is and what the future can be. The autonomous vehicle technology, Invest Ottawa, worked with our city staff and created an entire area in the uh, uh, 
experimental farm, is that what we call it? Experimental farm, and it's called Area X.0, where the city helped set up streets so that they could test out autonomous vehicles with the vision eventually that there would be autonomous vehicle shuttles. The area at Terry Fox and March Road has, if you look when you drive there next, you see all these interesting gadgets and things up high. That is the technology that helps uh, give signals to the autonomous vehicles. So this is all happening. It's not something that is going to happen. It's already happening due to the autonomous vehicle technology. It's already embedded in the tech park and being tested at area at X.0 thanks to Invest Ottawa. And we have Mike Tremblay here from Invest Ottawa sitting in our audience. After this is over, there are a lot of people you could talk to, a lot of people that could answer questions and help you understand better all that's going on here. Um, the research obviously happening by the universities, but within the uh, companies themselves, and obviously in the living lab. Uh, the data collection that goes along with that, and that is where we have the innovation part of live, work, play, learn, and innovate. This is what is actually going on here. So, uh, I asked the question, how do we connect what goes on in the special economic district to the whole city that designated as such? Because, you know, as I say, I love being the city councillor for Canada North, except for a few little small things that I don't really love at all. But uh, I do love it, but it uh, can't just be Canada North. You know, and I, I look at the, the people that went into making, giving it that designation and then creating what it is and the technology all across Ottawa. How does that help the whole city? And so the mayor, uh, who couldn't be here tonight, but asked me to let everybody know uh, this very, I think, innovative thing in itself. And that the mayor, as a result, is going to create a mayor's innovation and technology advisory table. Because there's all of this brain power here, and how is it getting to the city? How is it helping us as a city work better? Yeah, great that you know these companies are all in other countries, uh, seeing what's going on, improving technology all over the world. But what about the city of Ottawa itself? You know, I, I think there's a few areas we may need a little bit of advice on. You know, probably not transit. We have that all sorted out. But <laughs> there are other areas, and this is the potential. If you were able, and if you work for a company, if you were able to actually talk to the mayor, be at an event where you could say, listen, I understand you have this problem as a city, or the city, the mayor comes to the uh, table and says, we have this problem. What are other countries doing? What is the technology other people are using? How could we improve our systems to be more effective, more efficient, more innovative? Uh, that opportunity is all about to start. As soon as we get done with budget, uh, Mayor Sutcliffe says he will look at how this will start up. And Jeff McNamee at Carleton University, who's sitting over right there, is the person that you will want to connect with. And I believe the person in the mayor's office will be D.G. Stringer that will be uh, helping to organize that. And it will meet regularly and that will be the opportunity for you and your company or wherever it is to actually share your, your thinking, your ideas with the mayor and city staff. It won't just be Mayor Sutcliffe sitting at the table. Um, so, the reputation of the Special Economic District for Canada North Tech Park means as we attract more people here, we need more housing. But if we have more housing, then we have more property tax dollars. With more property tax dollars, then we can offer more services, more amenities. And as we have those, and that attracts young entrepreneurs, it also attracts, the, it also has them stay and convinces them to stay, and then they have families, and they have kids, and we have schools, and we have parks. Um, and we have community associations. What happens is people move here. Right? I told you, 70% of the tech workers live in Canada North. And then they have families, they live here, and they want to join together and do things that are important. And Canada Beaverbrook Community Association, Neil Thompson, the president, is sitting here in the audience, He'll tell you that people want to do things. They want to get together and they want to be a part of it. And they want to make their communities livable and they want to make it that kids have safe places to, to play and be and grow up and stay and live in Ottawa and keep our talent here if we have a beautiful, beautiful place to offer them to live. And, you know, they, they do all kinds of little projects. They get involved in, in uh, community building events and they do it on shoestring budgets. Another one is Canada Lakes Community Association. Another group, once Canada Lakes was, was born and grew, that community association developed. 
the Briarbrook Brookside Morgan's Grant Community Association. They have amazing projects right now in the Hydro Corridor where they're trying to create an eco district where pollinator gardens and people can walk through. You've seen if you've walked through, there's bee habitats and then there's bat shelters. And they, they create all these interesting places for people to go and play and exercise and walk their dogs and all the rest of it. The plan is to put a, a dog park in the Hydro Corridor and make use of that space that is otherwise potentially unusable. And that comes from a community association initiative. These are people that want to make their communities better. Um, Arcadia is a brand new one up by Tanger and they're, they're starting out, but I went to a park, we do park chats in the Canada North office, went to the park one night, there were 100 people in the park. It was unbelievable, families out after dinner just enjoying the park together with all, all different communities represented and uh, you know, they want to get together, they want to do things and that they make communities places where people want to live. The uh, Canada North Recreation Committee, Marianne Wilkinson started this a number of years ago so that we could get the Rich Craft Center built in Canada North and add two additional lanes to the pool and, and Marianne led the charge to raise additional monies for that to happen. And now this, this group does all kinds of interesting things. They work with Algonquin College and they have four strangers that go out into the trails and, and take summer camps of kids through the trails. They uh, work to dig out noxious weeds in the hydro corridor. These are all projects working with community associations to make our community a better place. The Canada North Transportation Committee, they concern themselves with all the trails and walking paths, bike lanes, everything that makes transportation in Canada North better for people, connecting what we call missing links, where there's a path but there isn't a connector to it. They identify it and help the city understand uh, where it can improve. And then of course for Canada Central, all the area around Centrum, all those shops, they have formed a Canada Central BIA. And they connect their uh, businesses together so that they can all uh, do better and attract people to the Canada Central area. A lot of interesting groups, a lot of interesting projects. And of course, the one nearest and dearest to our heart is the Canada Green Space Protection Coalition is when we had a builder who decided they wanted to build on our green space and our golf course, the community said no. And, you know, again, Marianne, this is Marianne Wilkinson show, the 40% agreement that was put in place by people like Marianne uh, was challenged. And it's still being challenged in court today, and yet this is a community group that's working to try and save this. The city's working very closely with them as well, and that needs to happen. Um, but, you know, again, the people in the community, and Many Tech Park employees live in Canada Beaverbrook around that golf course and use that green space all winter long, and they're not happy about it. Um, so, all of these types of things are uh, what are, are when we have additional dollars, when you see all those apartment buildings going up, there are additional dollars that go towards making sure the community has amenities, and some of it, if, if a park can't be built with a, an apartment building, we get cash in lieu of parkland and we're able to build more parks, uh, more ice rinks, pools, and then we come to transportation. And we're so glad that Glenn Gower is here, Councillor Gower from Stittsville. Um, transportation is a challenge. I mean, I talked to you earlier at the beginning about how geographically enormous this city is. And, and it is challenging. You know, I grew up in Toronto. And I've said many times, you know, the TTC and the subway started in 1954 and I was not born yet and I didn't have to deal with all the rigmarole and noise and blasting and mess of it all. It was a piece of cake for me as a kid in the 70s, just, you know, hopped on the subway, it was wonderful. You know, I didn't have to deal with any of it. But that's not us, right? Cities tend to move into massive transportation projects like that when they hit a million uh, population, right? So that's where we are. We are Toronto back in 1954. Um, so we are living the dream. And so for us in Canada though, you know, the, the dream started with stage one, stage two, right? So stage two is not finished and stage three, three is to come. Stage three there in the purple. And you can see the green line is where that will go right out to the airport, the international airport, like Boston and Logan Airport, you can just take your subway right to the airport, many, many cities. I just know Logan the best, but it is, uh, it's a piece of cake, you know, that will be us one day. It's the growing pains of it all right now that we have to endure. And you know, if you've emailed me about how much you hate those big white buildings on the Queensway for the Moody Drive station, uh -huh. then I feel for you, you know, it, it is, 
they're ugly. Uh, you know, we can talk about those another time, but that is where it'll stop for now at Moody Drive, right? So eventually, we'll have the line that is in the purple that will be the Canada Station, and then it will head up towards Stittsville and uh, Terry Fox. And you know, it will be great one day, but it is, uh, it's hard to live through for sure. Um, until then, until we have, I mean, we still don't have the Moody Drive Station up ready, but when it is ready, to get to the tech park, there's two main routes. Really, one of them is uh, Carling. So when Moody Drive Station opens, the route up Carling uh, is, a, is a clear straightaway to the back of the tech park. So when the Moody Drive Station opens, there will be express buses that will come up Carling. The, the recommendation is that Carling is widened. We get rid of that old train bridge that is everybody hates. Uh, sort of dangerous and uh, we'll run express, express buses up the back to the back of the tech park but really the big project that we need uh, support for from federal and provincial levels of government is the bus the widening of March Road and the bus rapid transit up the center of it and uh, you know it, it's a it's a massive project again you know and and the people who live around here will have to live through it but it is it is the future and you know, we see two stops there right now, and the, the push is because we are a special economic district, right? You get that designation, and you have to get people here. You know, I'm sure, you know, Glenn, Laura, Allen will tell you, we get emails every day from people telling us it takes an hour and 50 to get to, to anywhere, either from Canada to downtown or downtown to the tech park. You know, that, that's just not uh, helpful. An hour and 50 minutes and an hour and 50 minutes back, the transportation uh, challenges are real and we are working on them, um, but it, it has to be a solution. We have to get a solution because you know, we remember the, the traffic on March Road, what it was like, and uh, bus rapid transit up the center would change all that. Until then though, Moody Drive Station and then express buses up Carling. Um, so, I've told you sort of how, what we're doing, what the Special Economic District's all about. Uh, I guess I'm hoping you're, re you're asking this question, you know, how can, how can you be a part of this? This is, this is an important time in our history, I think, and it takes a lot of people and a lot of moving parts uh, to make this work the best. So I thought I would uh, end here with some suggestions, recommendations that you either individually can contemplate or your companies or institutions can contemplate them. But number one, please share this vision with other people and tell people what's going on here. You know, again, like I can't go door to door and tell one person at a time. I, you know, I look, this is a great opportunity for me to share uh, with you, but the more you can share it as well it would be very helpful. Um, you know, this one I have here, be able to tell people what your company does that makes the world a better place. So I, I want to tell you a very quick story. The former mayor, Jim Watson, and I were at an event and I'm not going to tell you what company this is because I don't want to embarrass them, but this is what actually happened. So I'm walking up to the company's booth at this event, and I said to the mayor, you're not going to believe this company. This company saves lives. It does this unbelievably amazing thing. I can't tell you because you'll know what company it is. But it, it's unbelievable. And at my story, I went on with what they did and how great it was, and Jim said, wow, well, that's amazing. I said, well, let's go up and talk to the, to the person here, you know? So the person's standing there behind their sign, and so the mayor says, hi, you know, I'm Jim Watson, and you know, I heard that you, your company's amazing, and, and what, you know, why don't you tell me about it? And the person says, well, we have this chip, and uh, it, it sits on this little module. <laughs> and <laughs> so the mayor looks at me like, have he? <laughs> no, wait a sec, no, don't, don't you do this amazing thing that saves people's lives, and you know, this, this happens, and then you stop that from happening, and it's amazing. And the person said, yeah, 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 then we do that. <laughs> so I was like, would you like me to write your elevator speech or whatever? Like, you know, I could do that for you, but you have to be able to explain whatever company you work for. You know, if you work for an institution, you have to be able to explain what you do. And the millennials today want to work for a company that is changing the world for the better. They do. They want to be able to say, well, my company, you know, saves lives. My company, you know, changes uh, people's ability to do something, you know. I mean that book, I don't know if you read the book, Start With Why, but you know, other companies said, oh, we have a computer that has this many gigahertz and megahertz and blah, 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 nobody even knows what these words mean. 
And then, but Apple said, imagine sitting on your dock and calling into a meeting. And so why is it that you do what you do? That's what you have to start with. So I encourage you to tell that story. I'm happy to tell it. I have a weekly, uh, bi-weekly newsletter. Nick Leonard and I here from the Canada North office work very hard to put it out. And we are happy to highlight what your company does or your organization does for people to know. But we want to tell a good story. I can't write about a chip. Nobody knows what a chip is. Nobody knows what it is. So I, uh, I want to be able to do that for you. And, and uh, you need to be able to do that as well. Um, so the other thing I think I would advise you is ask yourself, how can the company I work for help the city of Ottawa be more effective, efficient, innovative? and its services to the people of Ottawa. And maybe that answer is get yourself to this mayor's table, but see if there's not something that your company is doing or your institution's doing that would help the city of Ottawa as a whole or the organization, the actual uh, city of Ottawa's infrastructure, systems, effectiveness, efficiencies. What is it that you could do that would make uh, our city better? And you know, then come to the mayor's table and say something. Um, look at your company's corporate social responsibility plan. What is that? What are you doing? Are you trying to solve problems and, and help people in other countries or could you help people in this city? You know, in, in Canada North. You know that your employees live in this area. So what could you do that would help them and their families, but potentially in a bigger sense? You could get your company to support a community association. You know, these, these little groups, they work on shoestring budgets. You know, they want to do fun things in the community. Could your company not help, financially or even in volunteering? Uh, adopt a local park. We have a whole program at the city where you could, your company, your group, whoever, could adopt a local park. Park, you go and clean it. You go and make sure that it's, it's uh, taken care of, that there's any issues, signs, missing signs required. Adopting a local park is a popular thing to do, but we have a lot of parks. Sponsor a commemorative bench or a tree. You know, we have that program. We have a, a canopy growth target of the city to have 40% tree canopy, and we're at 29%. So 40%, we're at 29, we have a ways to go. The city wants to plant more trees. You know how many we've lost in storms, you know, most recently, many, many trees, right? Maybe your company wants to go out and plant trees or commemorative trees. If somebody in your company has passed and you want to commemorate them, we have that whole program at the city. And the benches, Campo Drive, we have all the seniors that live in those apartment buildings and they're saying to me, Kathy, the benches are too far apart from one bench to the next, I have to go on short walks. If you just had some more benches. Well, benches are expensive, right? And as a city councilor, we have budgets, you know, Alan and I talk about that all the time. Canada South, you know, what are you spending your budget on? Stittsville, I know Glenn and Laura from Orleans is asking, can I afford a bench this year to add one more bench? I mean, one more bench? I mean, really, you know, your, your companies could think about that. Sponsor, put your name on it. Um, you could obviously, if you're a tech park, a uh, member of this tech park, join the Canada North Business Association. It helps to connect all the companies within this tech park to each other. Um, our local newspaper, Community Voice. Honestly, you know, every, every so many months we have to worry about whether we're going to lose it or not. You know, we just, if you didn't notice, you didn't get a, a newspaper there, eh, through December and January, and now you're going to get one, I think, this coming week, maybe, because it went through this financial challenge, and so now someone has taken over the community voice. And, you know, the Ottawa Citizen, I've stopped reading the Ottawa Citizen, uh, honestly, when, what happened to news, that you couldn't get the, the, just the facts of the story and what actually happened? But no, you have to get this totally biased view from some group, some lobby group, some something that has, you know, convinced a reporter to write a story on a topic. The community voice is not that. The community voice is our local paper and it, it, it's, it's um, writers tell you what's going on in your community. So uh, they struggle all the time. The way they make money is through advertising and, you know, your company puts an ad in there, tells your story, that's an ad, it helps our, our little community voice newspaper. We have Canada Race Day in Canada. You know, it's, it's a wonderful race, starts at the Richcraft Center, and they're always looking for sponsors, right? You know, this, a small amount of money uh, enables that race to take place, where kids get out and run, right? We even have a, a what's it called, the something trot, where one-year-olds and two-year-olds run along the fields. It's hilarious. 
but it, it's, it's a 5K and a 10K run for and all the students of West Carlton, the Earl of March, A.Y. Jackson, Holy Trinity, A -Y, um, All Saints, they all have to do a 5K run for their grade nine uh, phys ed credit and they enter the Canada Race Day, right? These are all our future students at Carlton U and Ottawa U and Algonquin, La Cité, and then they see your advertisement at the Canada Race Day because they're all there. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing to do. And, you know, Canada Day in Canada, we didn't have it because of COVID uh, for a couple of years, but it was back last year. And uh, Alan Hubley and I are, are working with the committee right now to get that going again for, for July. 40,000 people came to Canada Day in Canada. 40,000 people. And what they need is they need sponsorships for the fireworks, sponsorship for the stage to be put up so that these kinds of activities can take place. You sponsor a booth, right? And it's your company there. You're, you're, you have access to 40,000 people who come to that event every year. And they all live in this area. And they actually, they live West Carlton, Stittsville, everybody comes to it, right? So there's, there's an opportunity. And this year, Alan uh, Hubley and I are gonna have a multicultural festival. We're gonna try to rook Glennon and uh, have it so that every culture uh, is represented and has, uh, there will be a stage set up potentially in Walter Baker Park where different cultures can have dances and, and demonstrate uh, what their uh, country's special days or special events are and have booths and all kinds of different food from all over the world. And you know your companies, your organizations are built based on the number of people we have from other countries that come to this tech park to work, to live, work, play, learn, and innovate. That it'd be easier to list the countries that are not represented in this special economic district than it would be to list the ones that are. And we know that. I was at an Indo-Canadian event there the other day and I said, I hope you know that we know uh, how important your graduates are from your countries when you come here and contribute to the high-tech uh, innovation. So we're going to have this multicultural festival. You want to attract talent to your country, to your companies, come to it, help sponsor it, have a booth, whatever you, whatever you're thinking. So I think that's, that's quite a lot of asks. And you know, before you leave, I do have all the contact information for every single suggestion I gave you. Here is the list and all the people you would contact for it, including the mayor's table and everyone else. There's a contact for every single thing I just listed. The Kanata Beaverbrook Community Association, all of the presidents, I see Kanata Lakes uh, president here, Karina's there. So you know, there's, these are all people you just need to reach out and say, hey, how can I help? So I think you must be saying, well, what are you going to do? Well, remember me? <laughs> I'm gonna be sitting. That's what I'm gonna be doing, along with Glenn and Laura and Alan. We're gonna sit, and then we're gonna sit, and then we're gonna sit some more. And, and that's a big part of our lives, in very, very long meetings, making decisions for the, hopefully, the betterment of everybody in uh, Canada North and the city as a whole. So, so that's what I'll be doing. I'm happy to uh, connect you. I, I think that is really my key role, is to connect people to other people. And that is, that is certainly one of the key things that happens in this tech park every day. So with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. And uh, if you have any for Glenn Gower back there for the LRT, remember he is here.